Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a pretty interesting video for you guys, which is triple booting on the Latte Panda. Now, this also applies on desktop PCs and also laptops, so you're not really constrained to the Latte Panda itself. So, let's get started. Now, before I begin this video, I do want to mention that I started a gaming channel and it'll be greatly appreciated if you guys could subscribe to that channel and at least get me over that thousand subscriber mark and also check out some videos I have there. It's I basically play Space Engineers and do some vlogging type style in that game. Now, I'm no stranger to triple booting. I've actually been doing this since 2011 and here's a quick screenshot of that. That's with uh, Mac OS 10.7, Windows 7 and also Ubuntu 11.10. And yeah, it, I've been using this technique to get triple booting working for quite some time now. Now people do have other techniques, but it's been working for me, so I'm just gonna stick with it. We are gonna be doing this on the Latte Panda, and it depends on the model of Latte Panda that you have. Now my model is the 864 with the EMMC installed, so I'm gonna leave Windows on the EMMC partition. Now if you're planning to do this without the EMMC, or if you're doing this on a desktop or a laptop, the technique might change just a hair. So to get started, Obviously, the first thing we need to do with the EMMC is to install Windows onto the EMMC block. Or if you already have it installed, just leave it there. So as for the next part, if you don't have EMMC or you already installed Windows, you have to boot up with the Mac OS installer. Now I did update it recently, so it's now working with 10.14.3. Once you get into the installer, we have to go into disk utility. The disk utility is where we're going to live for a little bit just to partition the drive. Mac cannot see the eMMC, so we don't have to worry about formatting the wrong thing. Select the SSD that you have or the M.2 or whatever you have placed in there. And then do first thing you want to do is erase the drive. Once you're done erasing the drive, it'll unlock that option where you could do the partition. Click on the partition and here's where it changes. If you have the MMC, just, you just need two partitions, one for Mac and one for Linux, and you're done. If you don't have the MMC, you, we need to make three partitions, one for Windows, one for Linux, and one for Mac. Now, as soon as you choose, in my case, two partitions, choose one of the two partitions and format that as FAT and name it Ubuntu or Linux or whatever you want. Now, the other partition, you want to format that as Mac OS journaling system and name that Mac OS or something. Once you're done with that, apply the changes and close out of the disk utility and reboot the system. If you are install Windows, this is the time where you would install Windows. And make sure you go through the custom install where you get to choose the partition you want to install it on. You're going to find that it's going to say FAT and one of the two drives are FAT. You could choose either one and just select it and have Windows installed there. Now here is for the Linux. As soon as you boot into Linux, get through the installer. I'm using Ubuntu Budgie. And you get to this part where it has where do you want to choose or where do you want to install your drive. There, you would have to do a custom install or select something other or something else, I believe it was there. As soon as you select that, it's going to show a list of partitions. And then you're going to have to choose SDA3 or SDA2, whichever one that says FAT on there. Choose that and then format it and change it to ext4 and the mount point forward slash. That would be the root on your folder. Once you're done with that, hit next and install that. And then it's gonna actually have another option to install Grub. You don't wanna install Grub on SDA. You wanna install Grub on SDA3 or SDA4, wherever your Linux installation is. It has to be on the same partition and same drive. And when you're done with that, just let the installer go through. Last but not least, we will be installing Mac OS. Now Mac OS is pretty straightforward now because there's only one partition that's Mac OS and it'll, it's the only partition you can choose. Go through that setup and when you're done, first thing I need to do is to boot into Mac so we can install our installer. Now the reason why we did this whole thing with the Mac OS first to do the partition is because it will cut out an EFI drive for the Mac OS. That EFI drive will allow the boot uh, the Clover to live, your, your Clover boot manager to live. And that's where we boot up the whole system with that. You can't use Grub to boot Mac. You can't use Windows to boot anything else. So we have to use the Mac boot manager or Clover boot manager, just boot all three. Once everything is all done and installed, you would DD the EFI drive from the USB over to your Mac OS drive like we did in our previous videos. You basically installed the bootloader and everything else. You could remove the USBs 
and reboot the system now and make sure everything works. Now you might have to go into BIOS and actually change the setting to see which one boots first and you want the UEFI one, which is UF, it will say UEFI OS. Once that's done, it will go right into your boot manager. All right, now that everything booted as it should, I'm gonna go into my Mac OS bootloader. Okay, since I am using the Broadcom Wi-Fi, which I'll leave a link in the description below on where you can get that, it is native to Mac that it will just boot up with the Wi-Fi and it'll work. But you're gonna have a little difficulty with Windows and Linux. But I'll show you in a second what I did. So here we have our configurator, which I downloaded earlier. And one of the things that I did do was remove the recovery partition because I didn't want to see four options in the menu. I just wanted to see three, Windows, Linux, and Mac. So what I ended up doing was going into mount and I mount the EFI partition. In there, I went right into the Clover, oops, the Clover config plist, went over to GUI and added this little hide volume area and I hid the pre-boot and the recovery partition so this way it won't pop up on the you know bootloader. Now that that's all set up I'm going to show you guys once I hit restart it's going to boot back into that bootloader and I'm going to choose Linux and I'll show you what I did in there. In Linux you see it still has grub. You could remove the timer, which I just left to show you guys, but you could actually remove the timer and it'll just go right into the bootloader. And you need to keep grub in here just in case you decide to have, you know, you get stuck in your Linux and you need to change the recovery mode or whatnot. So that's why I have, I have grub in there. One of the things that I did do here, I'm going to show you the command. And it's this command sudo app install bcmwl kernel sources. This will actually install the Broadcom uh, Wi-Fi card and everything. So this is why I needed to get the Wi-Fi working. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to use ethernet for a little bit until you get this up. And you can see Linux is working. So I'm gonna reboot this now and show you guys Windows. All right, so now we're gonna boot into Windows. And you can see all three boots right into the operating system. And each one of them technically has 64 gigs of storage. So it's more than enough to really test the environment. One of the things about Linux and actually just Mac itself, it uses universal time. Windows doesn't use universal time. So the hour, every time you boot up into Mac, it'll actually adjust the time on Windows. So in order to fix that, you actually have to go into reg edit it. Actually, you could Google this, which is universal time for Windows, and it'll actually come up with the registry key. And in this, I literally just had to add this one little key called real time is universal and made this data value one. So this way it knows it's universal time and it syncs up with Mac OS every time I boot into Mac. Otherwise, you're going to be like a four hour difference or five hour difference every time you boot up, which is annoying. So that's the only thing I fixed. I also had to download the Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers. There's actually different models of this. So this driver might not work. And how I got this was just through Apple's website because Apple has the bootcamp and in their bootcamp, they actually allow you to download the drivers. So you're gonna have to Google that as well. And here we have it, all three operating systems working under one roof and I'm able to select and boot right into each one of them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about this, I know this is more of a guide. I don't need to really show you guys how to install an operating system, do I? Yeah, this is more of a guide and hopefully you guys found this interesting. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. I'm also interested in making a video where I do a benchmark between all three operating systems on the Latte Panda, which is the same exact hardware, just three different operating systems. You know what? I will do that. And I'm, I want to make a poll which one you guys think is going to be faster, especially between the GPU and the CPU. So well, I'll do a little poll. Basically, CPU, which operating system you think is faster, or GPU, which operating system you think it's faster. My bet is on Linux. Honestly, I think Linux will be faster in CPU. And I think Windows will be faster than GPU. Maybe Mac OS might be somewhere in between. That's what I'm thinking. So it'll be interesting to see. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.